Okay, so now if we've finished all the different types of annotation tasks and annotated all the information you need, we're basically done. Um, what we can do now is just look at some of the other stuff. So for instance, um, we can look at the details for this task now to see what, um, what all we've annotated and what we haven't annotated. Um, it gives you a nice summary of the task. We just need to wait for that to load. And Okay, it's finished loading now. So now we can see all the detailed information for the annotation set to see how, what we've annotated and what we haven't. So, example, we can look at the leopards and we can see the number of clusters, number of images in those clusters, um, the number of sightings or boxes, um, the number of different individuals currently identified. Um, is what whether we've done now that level is complete, so that'll find group categories. We'll look at that shortly. Um, we can see that we've done the AI we checked ourselves against the AI. Um, additionally, we can see now that um, we've done informational tagging, for example, on the lion, but not the leopard. Um, and we can also see that we've corrected, uh, look, we've checked 61 of 61 of the um, leopard's um, uh, sightings or boxes. We've completed the first stage of individual identification, but, and then started, but not completed, the intercluster identification there. Um, you also see for like group categories, for example, small, small, medium cats. So you can see like um, uh, pig has not been annotated. We've not identified any, nothing's been identified to the subcategories there. There's small, medium cats we have. Obviously the AI has done it and that's why, for instance, hyena is marked as started but not complete. Um, and same with antelope. So the AI has identified some antelope to the antelope species. Um, whereas the small and medium cats is finished. So you'll see the column here is ta uh, tagged and complete. So the small and medium cats has actually been completed. So you'll see then if we click on small and medium cats, we can then see all that information for those individual categories as well. So this allows you to just get a good overview of what, what you've done and what you haven't done for your, your, um, your data set. Um, so we've seen launch, edit just lets you edit the labels. I'll have a separate um, video about that. No need to, to take up time on that now. So now we can extract some results. There's a number of different ways to do that. You just click results, the annotation set we want to extract. Um, so first and foremost, we can explore the survey. So this just lets you quite literally just look through and explore the survey. Um, so you can then say, okay, what species would we like to see? Let's species you'd like to um, be explored. We can say lion, for example, and then we can see all our clusters of lion images. You can see they're served as clusters. Um, you can see the label as well as the annotations. So we can see that this has been labeled as an adult female. We can look through our lion images, um, or we can do something in subspecies. We can say small, medium cats, um, subspecies serval, for example. Um, and we can actually then see the serval clusters and stuff like that. And if you find a mistake at any point and you want to create something, um, you can you can say annotation level, you can say informational tags if you want to work with that, or you can say, for instance, small, medium cats, or giving out small and medium cats labels, so you can overwrite the labels for um, any uh, clusters where you find a mistake here. So that lets you play around with your data set. So going back to our surveys page, um, we can then continue looking at those results. So after exploring the survey, we've got some built-in statistical tools. Um, so the first one there is the temporal analysis. And essentially that's a time of day activity pattern analysis. So we can say then this is, you can do it per site or across the entire survey, all species. Now we can see the number of clusters um, taken in each hour of the day. It's midnight, 6 a.m., midday, and 6 p.m. So we can see we've had a lot of activity at night um, as well as sort of a peak from what's at 9 and 10 in the morning. And if you mouse over them, you can actually see the, the counts of the clusters taken in each of those hours. Um, you can then also do that on an individual species basis. So I can then select leopard there, and it'll show me the, you know, I can see when my leopards were active in this, um, in the survey. And you can also add a second species. I can go ahead and say um, lion. And I can see then, for instance, when my lions were active relative to my leopards. So in this case, there are more lion um, clusters than leopard clusters. So what we can actually do is also normalize the count so that um, the, the counts add up to one so that they can be compared on the same axis. And essentially what we can see there, it's not a lot of data, so we're not getting um, a very pretty graph there, but essentially you can see that 
the lions tended to be more active in the early hours of the morning, whereas the leopards were sort of maybe more active in the evening, um, the sort of late, e uh, the late, well, yeah, creep at night, if you understand what I'm saying. So that's what you can do there. And then also, this is now based on cluster counts, but you can also do that um, based on image counts. Um, but that's not the, the first choice because if the animals, which you can see there, there's a hot spot there, um, if the lion spent a lot of time in front of the camera, it'll take a lot of images, which creates a hot spot. So it kind of throws off these sorts, sorts of analyses. So that's why that's clusters of the default there. We can also look at a spatial analysis. Um, so basically we've got our coordinates. There we can you see all our different points. What we can do then is get a heat map of, for instance, where our leopards are in our reserve. So I select that and we can see where the leopards were in the reserve or any other species. Again, this is for clusters. We can do it by image if we really want to. Um, and then also we can you know, set the radius thrown out by those, um, uh, by each site if you would like to. And then also try and normalize for trap density. So for instance, there's obviously more traps here um, close together so you get more um, more traps and you know to try and, and hence more images so to try and counteract that effect you can play around with those options there and obviously just hide stuff as necessary um, and also do a numerical analysis so this is essentially a bar graph um, it's not really but it's really nice you can just very quick, quickly see for instance our uh, different species of interest uh, we can look at say for instance also brown and you know, also lots of brown and you know, uh, there we go, brown ahina, and even and spotted ahina. So now we can see the counts of the clusters for each of those species um, within the survey. We can also, again, do it on images or sightings, um, depending on what you want. So there we can look at that. Um, after that, we can also look at um, individuals. We can see all the, the individuals that have been identified. Um, so you can filter by species. Um, Obviously, we only have leopards here. You can select a, an individual. Um, come on, load. There we go. So now we can see all the um, images associated with that individual. And this is obviously that one we've been looking at. But in this case, uh, it's one of the ones we actually never associated with that individual we were working with. So it shows you the site as well as the timestamp of each of these images. And then you've got the full set of images associated with that individual. You can, you can delete the individual completely, just dissolve it if it, there's a mistake, or remove a single image if it's incorrectly associated. Um, there, I think maybe there, that's that individual we're working with. Maybe, there we go. That's the one we're busy identifying. We've got all the other images from multiple dates combined. So that's it over there. So that's how you can look at your, your individuals. Um, but the main way to extract results is with the CSV file. So what you can do is just download the default um, uh, CSV file by clicking the download button there. It should cover most use cases, um, but you can generate a custom CSV file um, if you would like to. So there's a number of different options there, and I will probably have a separate video looking at the sort of advanced options here. But essentially the idea is you can combine multiple surveys together if you'd like. Then you can select so a CSV file, as you, as you may or may not be aware, is that you can look at it like a table. So you've got rows and columns, and so you can say, okay, what do you want each row in that table to represent? So um, default is you want one row per, per image, but you can also do it per cluster, for example. So you just extract results on a cluster level. Um, but you also got, for example, capture. So capture, the definition of capture is if your, um, your cameras are set to burst fire, three images when triggered, and those three images are treated as one unit of data called a capture. So that's what you can extract there. But typically, you're going to work with something like an image. Label format is how do you want, um, when there's multiple labels, well, how, do you, how would you like those images to be handled? The default is multiple columns. So it'll have label one, lion, label two, um, impala, the image listed once as one row. Um, you can instead have it listed as multiple rows. So you'll have image, image appear once, label lion. It'll appear a second time, label impala. It's just a different format, whatever's easier for you. And it's more for if you've got um, existing scripts, you don't have to edit anything or change anything. You can just kind of import it into your existing workflow. List will give you one label column, one row. It'll just then line, comma, and part. Essentially, the idea then you can play around with that. But the default is multiple columns. 
Um, you can also include exclude specific species. So if you're just looking at predators, you can just extract your predator information. Um, or you can, for instance, exclude your rhino information, um, stuff like that, or exclude humans, um, anything like that. Um, those are options there. Custom columns, they'll be covered in the, the, a separate video. That's if you just want unique identifiers um, to import the CSV into an existing database. Um, so we won't worry about that now. So we're just going to leave that. So a typical format, so now, firstly, so we've, we've chosen what each row of the table to represent an image, and now we can choose the columns of information that we want for those images. So if you look at sort of a typical format, we can say, okay, we want, um, say, the site name, so you know, K1, K2, K3, then we want those site coordinates, so we want site uh, latitude, followed by site longitude, then we want the image timestamp, now we know where and when the image was taken. And then we want the image labels. Um, so we can say, okay, um, so, the, so the label here is what it pertains to. So the data in this case pertains to the site, so the name pertains to the site, the latitude pertains to the site, etc. So it's the labels it pertain to the image. Um, and yeah, so basically we've got image labels, so we know what, what we've seen there. Then we, what we can also choose, for example, is image um, sighting count, and that'll give you the count of the um, species in each image. Um, so you'll have the labels, and then you'll have label one's count um, is two, for example. Um, so that's a useful format there. Um, and then also you get uh, another useful one, it's image URL, and that'll put a URL into the CSV file, and basically the idea there being that um, you can then follow that link, and it'll let you look at that image behind the login um, uh, you know the login creden your login credentials on through the website. It's secure. Only people with credentials can see um, that image, so it keeps things secure. So that's sort of a basic format there, and it'll, it will be in this order. So you can play around with the options there. So we're going to go ahead and request that. Click download. It'll um, it does take a little while, especially if it's a large data set. You just have to wait for that to become be ready. Um, you can queue it up, and you can actually queue up multiple um, requests, multiple surveys. Um, you just need to, um, uh, uh, you just mustn't navigate away from the page, otherwise you, you'll lose the download. So opening up that CSV file, I mean, you can obviously process that with a script or anything like that, um, but a useful format is, um, is you, can, you can process it in, um, uh, open it in Excel and basically look at it as a table. Essentially, you can see site name, coordinates, timestamp, um, the label um, and then the count of the detections for that species. So one server um, in this image at that location and then a URL to go and look at that. Um, in terms of options, we've got an Excel file. That's just a default sort of format. Um, it gives you a summary of your survey. Essentially, you can just download one of those and look at that. Um, a comparison that lets you compare multiple sets of annotations for one survey. So we're not going to um, look at that now. That will be a dedicated separate video. And then lastly, export. Um, that's export formats for other software. At this stage, we have the only export format we do have is for Wildbook. So if you use Wildbook, um, you, can, you can generate an export for that. The other main type of um, downloading results is to, um, to download your processed images. Um, so basically, you, you've got the, the option there to generate. And essentially, the idea is you can then down, as I said, download your processed images. So it'll put all the image labels into the metadata. Um, and if you corrected the timestamps, it'll correct the timestamps in the metadata, all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can then you know, have, have your data in that sort of format. So again, you can do it for all species or you know a subset species if you would like. Um, and then you can then say, okay, um, uh, you've got some other options here. So for instance, the folder structure, so you've uploaded it in that folder tree. Do you want to keep that folder tree? Or do you just want to flatten everything to a single folder? If you do that, it'll put all the information from the image into the image name. Um, then we also have um, where you want to sort everything by species. So again, if you sort it by species, you'll have a top level folder, um, uh, you know, leopards, lions, and then those images are, are sorted by species. You can also optionally have everything sorted by um, individuals. So again, if you've identified individuals, Within, in this case, the leopard category, we're going to have um, a set of labels, I mean, a set of uh, folders for 
um, uh, for each for each individual, essentially giving you identity kits um, for for your leopards. So th that then, once you request that, it'll start processing. Again, if you've got a lot of images, that can take a while, and that will then um, you'll see once it's stopped processing, it's complete. Um, the status on the survey will change, and then you can go ahead and those images will be in there's a downloads folder um, in your bucket in your folder. You can access that through Cyberduck um, and just download the images from there um, in that way. And that's that's how we handle that. So go ahead and say process. It's just telling me I can go and fetch it later. You can see it's now processing. We just wait for it to finish processing. Okay, our survey is finished processing now, so we can see the status has changed already. So we know now it's finished. Um, uh, processing those images, so we can actually go ahead and download them. So as I said, uh, I said before, we use Cyberduck, so we open up Cyberduck, and you'll see within our folders now, we've got a downloads folder. If we go inside there, there's a folder for Qualuzi, so that's now um, the download that we've requested. So I'll go ahead and open Qualuzi, you'll see there there's a separate folder for Leopard and for Lion, again as expected. And within the Leopard, we've got a separate folder for each individual that we have identified there. Um, I think 15 was the one um, that we, would, we worked on, if I remember correctly. So you'll see there, we've got each image now has contains all the information that was in the folder structure, has now been pushed into the, the um, image name. So it's site name, timestamp, um, label, and image. And if we were to actually download these images, we'd see that the, um, the labels are in the metadata. So you can also play, play around and look at that. So quite a straightforward process, if we just go to uh, the downloads folder, there's Qualuzi there, I can right click on that, say download to, I can then say desktop and hit OK, and it'll go ahead and download those images. And that's it. Um, that concludes the tutorial.